Hi, Daphna. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to New York. I'm glad you've escaped Cincinnati. Um, I, we're in New York City. Uh, I'm Teddy Gross. Uh, I'm the founding director of Common Sense. You're asking a great question. Why, did, why is Common Sense around or how did it get started? It starts with my own childhood um, and uh, growing up in, uh, in Israel. Uh, and uh, um, feeling like I was part of a generation that was um, the future. Um, and then coming back as an 11-year-old to America and uh, finding that uh, children here are kind of little uh, accessories uh, of their parents. And uh, so here I felt like I was a, you know, there was a big person inside me but nobody kind of noticed. And I became involved in uh, the civil rights movement and after that in the peace movement and became a journalist and very active in trying to uh, do whatever I could in the areas of social justice. And, and, uh, but it wasn't until my daughter was born and she began to advocate in her own very a powerful way, even as a very young child, for um, for simple things like helping a homeless man, um, <clears throat> that I realized that if I didn't respond to her, uh, I would be um, committing the same crime against her that I remember feeling when I was a kid. So um, I looked around for something that I could do with her. And I couldn't find anything that was going to be uh, safe for her and at the same time significant for her. Um, so this idea that uh, came to me one day that we, that we could go around our apartment building, which was just a very simple project, um, and ask our neighbors for the pennies that were going to waste in their building uh, was nothing more than just a, 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 a father's answer to a little problem of his daughter. Um, and that's really all it meant, was meant to be. But I found out two things, um, or maybe three. Uh, the first was quite obvious, and that was that there was a ton of pennies in people's homes, uh, which was staggering to both of us. And then into the bank. I mean, we had to load it up with a dolly and a borrowed station wagon just to get the coin from one um, building uh, out. Uh, and it was close to a ton, literally a ton of coin. Uh, I also found out that um, this was great fun for her, great fun for the neighbors. Um, and I discovered the third thing, and that was that it was really powerful experience for me. You know, I thought I was doing this for her, and I thought this was a very meaningful thing for her, but I learned that it was actually uh, changing uh, the way I was responding to my own neighborhood. There are lots and lots of fundraising. Uh, there's lots of fundraising that goes on with children. You know, it, and there's a fundraising industrial complex in this country that raises money for good causes. And, and a lot of it uh, involves children. Uh, some of it is for their own schools and some of it is for the neighborhoods. I was involved in it as a kid. You know, I, I collected coins and I loved doing it. I was actually very good at it. But I also remember a point when I realized that all these charities, you know, actually were, were using me. So, this project is really designed in every sense to take them seriously and to follow their uh, evolving, growing, complex desire to be participating human beings. We've found out is that we can script um, a opportunities for them to realize that when they decide they want to do more, there are ways for them to do it. And so we see larger and larger numbers of grants uh, for smaller and smaller amounts of money to sponsor projects in the school that involve children in the communities. 
I think it's a great question. Is was common sense a risk? Um, it still is a risk um, in a very interesting way because um, you know I feel very much like uh, I'm following the logic of its own unfolding, but it's not clear where it's going, you know, and it's not clear um, uh, in so many ways. Um, just how it will unfold. The first idea of the organization was how could I start an organization that would never have a meeting? Because meetings, you know, as a writer, the last thing in the world I ever wanted was to have a meeting. You know, um, try and make it happen without any meetings. Of course, now I go from meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting, and I actually like them. Part of the fun, I think, of doing something that isn't your career at first, and, and I think it's always, I think it's something that we probably should always try and do, not to be so fully invested, not to get in our own way, um, so that um, you can continue to enjoy the fact that you don't know what is going to happen next, and enjoy the risk that's involved. I think for me. Um, the thing that I enjoyed the most about this from the very beginning was um, that it was the fullest expression of who I was. And it was the fullest uh, expression, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't compromised by um, professional expectations. I think it, it has turned out to be a versatile and durable piece of cultural infrastructure uh, in within schools and it's very satisfying to to see that it feels like um, maybe what is really happening here is that a very natural succession of events that <clears throat> go back to the first centuries you know um, you know in any in the shtetl uh, you know around you know uh, the in in Maimonides they talk in the Mishnah Torah about the responsibility of the community to collect in the the kupa you know, collecting the money that's necessary to keep the community alive and necessary to meet the needs of the of the poor and who needs to pay into it and and um, that maybe what the penny harvest has done is it has been to reframe the, these very ancient practices of community building and place them inside a, the context of the current institutional you know, life that children live in a genuine way. I became really fascinated with the twin journeys that we can take as adults supporting children and the children can take in their own effort uh, to support the work of their their community, um, and uh, that's the that's how and why the penny harvest got started. The, the danger in talking to me is that it, is that this is going to sound like it's my story. Yes, um, the initial idea came to me. But it's a folk uh, property, and it belongs to the people who are using it, and they're the ones who actually have crafted it. For a playwright, it does feel a little bit like we wrote the script, and they're performing it. But the creativity and the innovation that is really happening out there in classrooms and schoolhouses and neighborhoods across the city and now outside the city. The question really is, you know, do I need to be sitting here anymore? I'm really happy to report that if I weren't sitting here, it would, it would go on.